Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Today we're going to do a recipe for soup that um, really triggers those purists. They hate this soup. I really enjoy it. Um, I can't find my garlic crusher. I wonder where that's gone. Anyway, I really like this soup and I'm gonna do, so it's Zuppa de Toscana or Tuscan soup. Um, I'm not staying true to the version of that, uh, that, that place run by the olive farmers. I'm, I'm making a version on my own that sort of reaches back to a video that we did in 2015 with an Italian chef who did an actual Tuscan soup, a soup that would be representative of, of soup that you would see on tables in Tuscany. Um, her name is Emily Richards. She is a chef, cookbook author, recipe developer, and she had a show on, um, on the Food Network back when the Food Network had cooking shows. So take a look for that recipe on our channel. It is a great Tuscan soup, but the version of Zuppa Toscana that I'm going to make today is really tightly linked to that group of olive farmers from Orlando, Florida. Um, although they have, they have groves all over the United States. Um, it's been a long time since they had one close to us. There are none left in Toronto, um, probably a decade or more since they were gone. Anyway, this restaurant group based in Orlando, Florida, makes American Italian food. And it's very purposefully, I'm saying American Italian rather than Italian American. And they've come up with this shorthand for recipes on their menu that feature a cream sauce with tomatoes and a green um, in the sauce, either kale or spinach. And they've branded it Tuscan. And they've been very successful with this sort of flavor combination or sauce combination, selling it as Tuscan. Okay, so that bacon is frying off nicely. I don't want to fry it all the way. I'm going to add in some Italian sausages. I've taken the casings off the sausage so I can just break it up. And we're going to fry that down as well. Found my garlic crusher. So back on it. If you've ever been to Tuscany, you know that this is not a dish. This combination really isn't something that you're going to find on the tables there. It is fusion food, plain and simple. Um, Tuscan is just short form for, I'm expecting, cream, tomato, and, and a green. And the tomato can be in the form that I've got here today. I've got little cherry tomatoes that I've cut in half. Or, more often, it is um, a sun-dried tomato put in for a really intense tomato flavor. So I'm just cooking this down, breaking up the sausage, because you don't want big lumps of sausage. You want the sausage sort of tiny little pieces all the way through. And at this point, I'm going to put in carrot, celery, and onion. This is where I differ from um, the olive grove. They don't use celery or tomato or celery or carrot in their soup, but I think it really adds something to the soup. So I'm going to put it in because I like it and I'm cooking for myself. And I encourage you always to cook for yourself and do things that you like. All right, so just continue stirring and cooking this and sweat this down until the onions are uh, really translucent. And keep breaking up that sausage. Now, I'm gonna crush in some garlic and uh, pull this out of the garden this morning. This is this year's harvest of garlic. So in that goes. Got some red pepper flakes, a couple pinches of that, and I'm gonna cheat. I'm going to use Italian seasoning, a ready-made seasoning mix. I'm gonna put in about that much, maybe about a, two teaspoons or a tablespoon, and we'll stir that in. Now in terms of spicing, uh, the sausage that you use determines a lot of what you need to put in for spicing. If you've got a really flavorful sausage, like a really good flavored sausage, like I do, um, you don't have to put as many other ingredients in to build up that flavor. If your sausage is so-so, you're going to have to put in some other things to sort of build it up. And the same thing with salt. I'm not putting in salt just yet. 
because there's going to be a lot of salt carried in with this, with the stock that I use. So I'm very careful about adding salt, too much salt, too early in the process. Next in, I'm going to put white beans, and I'm using navy beans today because they're just a little bit smaller than cannellini or white kidney beans. And I think, for this type of soup, the smaller bean fits on my spoon better, and it makes me much happier. So use a bean that you like, um, but you know, cannellini would be the traditional bean used in this soup. I've got some cherry tomatoes, I'm going to put those in. I've got a couple of cubed up potatoes, in they go. And I've got some chicken stock. In that goes. There we go, I'm gonna give it a stir. I'm gonna bring this up to a boil and then turn it down to a simmer, put a lid on and let it go for about half an hour. Okay, so we just had the brownies, the bacon maple brownies, and the soup. And I went and got bowls. <laughs> I went and got bowls, so we're ready for soup. So the soup is pretty much ready to go. The last two ingredients that you add are the whipping cream and the spinach. Um, so, a cup of whipping cream. This could be kale, if you like kale. Uh, I'm not a fan of kale unless it's been through a frost cycle. I've realized that. And the spinach wilts in almost immediately, so it's just pretty much a matter of stirring it together. And There we go. Very colorful. It is very colorful. It is, it is that, you know, Olive Garden Tuscan soup color. Okay, bowl of soup for Julie. Ready. I'm going to turn that off. Now, I would encourage you to go and watch the video, the video from 2015 of Emily making an actual Tuscan soup. Oh, that's a good soup. Yeah, that is a really good soup. Um, and it's a video from 2015 that doesn't have many views. So, you know, if everybody who watches this view, this video, <laughs> just, just clicked over and watched, you know, the video even if it was playing in the background, that would be great. But it is a great, <laughs> but it is a great soup. It is a great soup. Okay. Yeah, Emily's a great cook. Yeah. Chef. Chef. Technically chef. Mm-hmm. It's bright. Mm-hmm. It's clean. Um, the amount of cream that I put in there doesn't... doesn't drag it down like some cream soups can, can be really heavy. Mm-hmm. It's still a very light soup. The cream just sort of adds a little bit of mouthfeel, but it doesn't, doesn't drag it down. Whew. It's hot. Oh, it's hot right at the... It is hot. <laughs> the bowl is hot now. <laughs> mm. So if you're a fan of the Olive Farmer soup, this has some additions that just sort of rounds rounds it out a little bit, I think. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I yeah. think I could probably even eat the biscuits you made the other day would go in as well. Yes. The no, non-leaven... The, the, beaten, biscuits. the beaten biscuits from the early 1800s. The proto biscuit. Proto biscuit. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to go and sit down and actually eat our supper. This is great soup. Um, I would encourage you to try it and make it, and I would encourage you to try an actual Tuscan soup and then compare the two, and let us know down in the comments what you think. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.